Welcome, welcome. All right. Well, we're going to get started. Um, I guess I'm going to introduce myself. Lucy, if you want to pop that slide up. That's me. All right. So I am a coach facilitator for the International Coaching Group, Coaching Out of the Box. I've been coaching since 1998 is when I started my coach training and started my business full time uh, that same year, a little bit later. So I actually just celebrated my 26th anniversary as a coach. Um, a friend, a dear friend of mine, just before she unfortunately passed away, shared a concept with me. And she said, Jen, you are a leader of leaders. And when she said that, I had no idea what she meant by that. And she said, don't worry about it. You don't have to understand it right now. Um, but you will understand and you'll grow into it over time. And just an, an incredibly wise, beautiful soul in this world. And so I've been embracing that, that concept of being a, lead, a leader of leaders. And I do believe that coaches are leaders in the world. And I feel as though I get to interact with people who are leading in all different ways, whether they actually have the title of leader or not. Um, at a minimum, people are leaders of their own lives. Um, and so, so that's why that is there as a part of my, my introduction. Uh, when I got into coaching, not many people had ever heard of it. When I would go out and speak, I'd say, who knows what, what life coaching is? Actually, it was called personal coaching originally. No hands would go up. And now, of course, worldwide, people are very aware of what we are. So I'm proud to have been a part of that global movement to spread the word about the power of coaching. And I'm certainly glad that all of you have listened to the call and are answering the call to be coaches in the world. Uh, I am a master certified coach, which is relatively new for me. I finally said, okay, I am going to go for it. And I did that last year and it was an incredible experience um, walking through all the different parts of that puzzle. Uh, I learned and grew, which of course we all know in coaching that's so important. Uh, I've been a professional mentor coach, though, for a very long time, and I was a PCC for a very long time, uh, and I also have been through the um, ICF for professional assessor training. So I have written a book. It's called Plant Yourself Where You Will Bloom, How to Turn What Makes You Unique into a Meaningful and Lucrative Career, uh, and that's been one of my prides and joy. I just love it when I give a talk about it and someone brings their book in and it's got all kinds of post-it notes in it and pages turned down. It's very, very mm -hmm. gratifying to know that the work that I've been doing is helpful for folks. So um, that's been one of my greatest joys. And I have a signature program called Career Epiphany that really helps people to pinpoint exactly what they're meant to be doing uh, for their career. So that was the cornerstone. Uh, and I was telling our, um, our guest client today that I've coached in just about every format you can imagine and all kinds of people around the world. I feel very blessed and lucky. So that's a little bit about me. Um, one more thing, Lucy, if you want to go forward with the slide, I am also the host of the Inspiring Coaches Show, which is the podcast for our wonderful sponsor today. Um, we just had our one year anniversary of our episodes. Uh, and so I would absolutely love to invite you to participate in that in a couple of ways. One is go find it on your on a, a platform near you, whatever your favorite podcast platform is, and please subscribe to it. Uh, and also, Lucy, if you want to go to the next slide, we have some ways for you to reach out. So if you are interested in being a guest, um, basically, we want to know what is it that's inspiring you as a coach? How are you inspired to bring coaching to the world? So if you have a, an idea of what you'd like to share, you can send it to Jennifer at coachingoutofthebox.com. Just a short blurb on how your topic will inspire coaches. And also I do a celebration at the beginning of each podcast episode. So just a short two or three sentence. What are you celebrating about your work as a coach in the world? And again, you can send that to Jennifer at coachingoutofthebox.com. I'll be happy to feature you in an upcoming episode. All right. So I think, Lucy, I think there was something else you wanted me to invite everyone to do. Put their questions in the comments. Was there anything else that you wanted before we officially get started? If, if, if anyone has an, uh, any questions, you can just type in the comments and I'll be more than happy just to read all your questions as well. But I think I'm ready. Thanks, Lucy. Appreciate that. And thank you to those of you who are congratulating me. I will celebrate that. MCC. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go. Oh, wait a second. First, I'm going to talk about the uh, ICF coaching definition. So coaching is partnering with clients in a thought provoking and creative process 
that inspire them to maximize their personal and professional potential. I'd like to invite everyone to pick one word from that definition that really speaks to you and pop it into the chat. And what is it that's speaking to you about that today in this moment? Because I think that'll set the stage for, for listening, right? Actively listening as we're going through the demo. Well, thank you. I'm seeing everyone. Okay, partner, I'm definitely going to be going to be demonstrating that with Alan. Thought provoking. Absolutely. Love that it's not just the coaches, but neither is it just the coachee. That's right. It really is a partnership, Shannon. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Well, we better get started so that we can make sure that we serve everyone, including most importantly, my wonderful client today. So <laughs> Ellen, are you there? I'm here. Okay. We got to get you spotlighted up. Oh, and I saw Ann Fogel in spotlighted for a second there. Hi, Ann. <laughs> All right. Welcome. All right. So Ellen, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate that you took time out of your your life to come and um, support coaches in, in their quest to learn and grow more. It's my pleasure. Good, I'm glad. And, you know, in terms of our confidentiality, the reality is right now we have about 42 people <laughs> who are here. <laughs> I heard that well over a hundred signed up. And so they may be, may be listening and watching via the recording of it. And, you know, it'll live for a while probably out there. So in terms of the con confidentiality, how are you feeling? Okay. I trust all 42 people here. Yes, it's fine. <laughs> okay, good. I do too. So that's a good thing. Well, I just want to say that if if I go down a path that's uncomfortable for you in, in any way, we can certainly, you know, stop, back up, go another direction, stop altogether if that's what you prefer. So anything else that you'd like to to share about feeling safe in our space? No, it's fine. Okay. All right. Well. I can't see as well without them on. There we go. Is that better? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, what would you like to be coached on today? Uh, I have started a new role at uh, a, a, a philanthropic organization that I've been a part of since 2012. I had stepped back from it and to do some other things and um, I've kind of been in the background, but then they asked me to be uh, what they call president-elect. And that means that for the next year, I follow the president around, and then for a, a year, I'll be president. And um, that just started as of June 1st. And I'm uh, I'm not quite sure how to do this role. It's it's a little bit nebulously defined. And, and, and I, the main thing is to support the president. And was chatting with her today, and I'll try not to share any confidence of hers out mm -hmm. of out of you know, appreciation for that. But um, as a new president, people are starting to hit her with all these things. And um, there's a person in the organization that's fairly high up that is really different yeah, and, and comes across as being very abrupt and harsh. And yet, if you set aside that, she's a really great person. She works really hard, does a lot. And so I'm listening to the president and I'm like, okay, what do I do to support her? And I don't want to be stepping into her stuff. And yet I have a lot of experience. How do I run that line? Um, how do I make myself more... I, I've been kind of out of the organization for so many years. How do I make myself known to the organization and fulfill this undefined role, except follow the president around to learn the job? And, and that's what I'm, that's kind of what I was thinking about in today in particular, because I was interacting with them this morning. Well, so it's fresh on your mind right now. Yeah. And yeah. So you said that you were a part of the organization in the past, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And is this what you were celebrating in the beginning of the, the whole webinar? Is this the yeah, yeah, being president-elect? Okay. Okay. It was part of it. And then there was the other thing I was celebrating was the thing tomorrow. Right. And I think right. I'm ready for it. That's a, 
but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> that's great though to feel ready. All right, I got so too many things on my plate here. Yeah, yeah. What's what's your big opportunity that had you saying yes to? Ah, uh-huh. um, it's it's kind of a sad thing, which is um, the reason I said yes, and this is not the first time they'd asked me to do it. Uh, I recent over the last. It's going to be closer to nine months now. Had so many women die or leave. Just so many of these people that are just lights in the world and they're gone. And this is an, this organization is an organization of older women. I may be on the lower end of the age range of these women. And we're all facing the same thing of losing of the support of husbands, of partners, of friends that you've known forever, of all these people that just, you know, make such a difference in the world. And I wanted to step in and strengthen that community. Um, As a matter of fact, that's something that Terry brought up this morning when I was talking to her about other things. It's like, she just isn't happy with the, I can't, I don't have the right word here cohesiveness of the membership the, that the man there's the there's like 340 people all together not all of whom are active but of the 170 or so people that are active she, she's saying that they aren't for some reason pulling together and, and i'd like to find a way to make that better without taking away from the good work that's being done because it is it's a it's a philanthropic organization, and that's the focus. It's a 501c3 corporation. So it is a corporation, and yet it's a group of older women who are facing all the same things we all face. So, okay. I hope I answered your question there. What did you I hope express- I answered that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you express that really stood out for you as being most important? Support of one another I think for me is is what I would like it's what I would like us to do to be there for one another as we go through the changes that come because it is you just every (laughs) what was the joke my husband told me about waking up in the middle of the night or waking up in the morning and rolling out of bed and suddenly your knees don't work anymore. That's like, you know, it's just like, there's always something. <laughs> it's just always something happening. And, and uh, anyway, so mm-hmm. that whole facing, facing all these changes mm-hmm. and losses, there's a lot of loss. Mm-hmm. So, so facing yeah. change and loss. Yeah. Support. Yeah. Uh, and cohesiveness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any other words that are standing out to you? Wish I could remember some of the ones that Terry was using. Yeah, because I'm almost thinking of the opposite words. You know, mm-hmm. some of the bickering, I think, was a word that Terry was saying mm-hmm. and um, complaining about one another. Mm. And uh, and I think that pulls away then, right? Mm. Uh, you know, something something our our lovely hard-working person who has a terrible personality right she'll this is a volunteer organization she can set somebody off and they're like i'm out of here and and so that's almost the thing we don't want to have at the same time being inclusive and pulling people together Mm -hmm. and so it's a, a such a strange line you know it's not like we're being paid to do this or Something. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's what's the opposite of bickering? Um, camaraderie, uh, maybe. Mm-hmm. Kindness. Kindness. Camaraderie. So I'm really noticing that you come from a very different place in terms of possibility and positivity, even than other people who are a part of it. Oh, probably, yeah. Mm. Yes, yes, I, I would guess so. I, I come from long-time management background, um, doing a lot with 
uh, bringing, bringing people together. Uh, our church is big on that. And uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of that. Mm. But, but that's the joy in the world is all the difference of the people. Okay. So I like Sounds that. like you value that. I do. If you ever do one of those, what is it, strengths finders? I can't remember what they're called now. Mm. But yeah, inclusiveness is way high up on my Absolutely. list. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any other words that you remember from that? That's from the strength stuff? Yeah. Oh, let's see. Uh, planning an organization. Um, focus. Those are some of mine. Mm -hmm. I get too focused. I, that's almost more oh. of an issue. But... <laughs> I understand that about those assessment tools, that it's uh -huh. a strength until it's not. It's a strength until you found yourself rabbit holing on some stupid video you didn't mean to watch. <laughs> okay. Okay, but that inclusivity. Inclusivity is very high for me. And I have to recognize that it is not for everyone. Mm. Uh, every once in a while, you know, I'll run into somebody and bump up against that. That is not something they value and have to go, okay, that's mm. okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not something that's important to them. Mm -hmm. But well, yes. You're paying but, attention, I'm, it sounds like. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's something to bring to the organization. I'm not sure how. Mm -hmm. But again, it's that sense of community, of bringing together. And I'm just on my very first steps on two years of being able to do this. Mm. And I, I want to make sure my steps start right. Okay. With that said, what would we focus on today that would be really valuable for you? Yes, I'd like some thoughts on, am, am I starting off right? And then I, I guess I'd like to think about that and then think about, well, what are the steps I'm taking? Are there others I should be doing or could be doing? Not should be, but could be. Could be. Okay. So steps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And what in particular would you like to walk away with? I'd like to walk away with probably um, having thought about, is there anything I'm missing and a list of what what I can be doing okay so a list of what you can be doing and anything you might as do. as to set myself up properly not I don't I'm not saying for the next two years I'm saying like for the next two months what can the I next do two months okay well that yes. certainly points to the relevance of this conversation yeah and it's just getting started and I think beginnings matter beginnings matter so okay yeah. All right. Anything else that you want to articulate before we dive in? I can't think of anything. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so what have you already thought of? Um, as part of the job that you tend to get invited, you are an ex officio member of every stinking committee they've got, and they've got a lot of them. So I have been trying to reach out to all these committees to... Um, be invited to them. I haven't completed that yet, but that that's one thing is get in, get involved with all the committees. Um, there are two activities that we do throughout the summer. Uh, one we do throughout the year, but one throughout the summer uh, on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So I'm trying to go to those where it's just whoever can come in and do work can comes in and does work. And um, so I'm trying to do those and that's the two main things I've done so far. Um, I probably need to talk to, uh, it has, a, it has a board, you know, so we have president and president elect and, but then there's parliamentary and there's a the person who's ahead of all of our programs and there's the person that's head of the finances and all these people that are ahead of these different areas. And I probably should get with all of them. And I should be taking notes or I will forget. Oh, Hang on a second. Um, anyway. Um, and those are the those are the main ones I've thought of so far. Um, there's general meetings. So I'm attending the general meetings. Uh, 
But I wonder how, I mean, again, I don't think I can meet 170 people in two months. Mm. But, uh, hmm. but also I'm worried about supporting Terry. Mm. Um, she hasn't been in this kind of role before. Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell it's being a bit of a problem for her. And I'm not sure how to do that. I mean, when I talk about setting setting this up right, how do I make sure that I'm, you know, doing what I can to help her? I, essentially, she needs a coach. So, mm. <laughs> but I don't think that's my role. Mm. So, I noticed off. that you used a different word than what you've been using, which is worried. You said you're worried about Terry. I'm a little worried after after the conversation this morning about well you know well Ellen I want to keep you in the loop and I've got this and this and this and I'm like and she just looked pretty stressed about it I'm like oh dear okay and she's these are this is all new to her well I you know I, it's been a while I've been retired for a while but even so I'm familiar with personnel issues so yeah. that's it's in there it's in there Right. Yeah, you've got all that. So yeah, it it worries me a little bit. She's just a wonderful person, and I I wouldn't want the negative aspects of this to weigh her down too much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not like a little bit of a vision of would you would you get from just that? Yeah, kind of a yeah. I don't want her. I wish there was a way I could lighten that burden for her. Besides just following around every meeting that she's in, that isn't, I'm sure that's helpful. I mean, it's always helpful to have somebody to talk to. Mm. Okay. But, so you're seeing the value in that. I'm sorry. You're seeing the value in, in being uh, there's, there somebody yeah. to talk to. Mm -hmm. There is the value of that. That's kind of almost a subset of the value of being a coach. But, uh, what else yeah. might be there? Uh, I'm in uh, in the steps or in supporting Terry. Uh, either one, I guess. One, yes, yeah. excuse me. Um, hmm. I don't have any official one-on-one -on -one meetings with her or get-togethers. Um, and she mentioned today she really enjoys just chatting with people around the water cooler, but there's no water. Well, there is a water cooler technically, but you know, meet meetups with her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so maybe, maybe working on that just to be available in a way for her, it would be helpful. What might that look like? Well, I would have said, you know, if we were involved in something we could together, we would be meeting up and chatting. Um, I well, here's an idea. Um, since she mentioned since she mentioned that in particular, uh, we have we have to meet once a week uh, briefly. It's not a very long, but Perhaps I could make that a little more structured and make sure I bring coffee or bring something that that does that. Okay. We when I uh, I used to work at Hewlett Packard and we had a, a a thing where they would once a week bring around coffee and snacks and. Uh, the whoever the head honcho was at the time would get up and give a give a talk and just it was just a reason for people to gather and and talk I, I wish we had something like that so it sounded like the sort of thing that Terry would enjoy give her an opportunity to uh, to do some of this stuff too maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that but it might be an idea and it would help me, wouldn't it? Because it would it would loop back around to my problem of having been basically out of things for five years and needing to come in and meet people again and find out what's what's what. And so 
Mm. Sounds like a win win. Win win win. Yeah. I wonder how to do that. Without setting off any of the alarms within the system of taking time away or devoting things to the wrong spot <laughs> that come about with 501c3 corporations where you have to be careful with how you spend your money. Mm -hmm. So I never put Mm -hmm. Think about that. That's a possibility. Hmm. I don't know how to do it, but I can think about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a vast background to draw from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a nice way to say you're old. I like that. <laughs> you have a vast background. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> I'm, I'm not in the business of calling anybody old. <laughs> it's you, okay. you come across as a very lighthearted. Um, you do. You do. Playfulness. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What are you noticing so far in our conversation? I love how it comes up with ideas that I would never have thought of otherwise. Mm. Just love that. Mm. And also I didn't, hadn't really thought about how I was worried about Terry. Mm. Not like worried, but worried. You know, little, little W worried. Little W worried. Okay. Yeah. Go for the gusto, Ellen. What's something that you haven't thought of that you're now thinking, oh, I wonder if we could do some, uh, this this doesn't even sound that large, but it, it can be within this organization, some sort of more frequent, larger get-togethers of a social nature. And uh, I don't know how you would do that. You would, uh, you would think that would be straightforward, but there's all these things that get in the way when you have so many years of history and so many people that say no pretty, pretty easily. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot of overcoming no's. <laughs> mm. And you were framing this within the first two months and laying yeah. the, the groundwork, the foundation piece. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. And that yeah. doing that would be big. You are very aware, Ellen, of all the different possibilities within this. I have been in it since 2012. So I, I've seen them struggle with a lot of things that you would think would be easy. I don't know. Mm, but they're not. Okay. But they've made amazing progress in the last five years since I paid attention. So very positive. Very positive. Ah, there you go. There's there's you again, right? Seeing the positivity, seeing it's the strength. Just yeah. Okay. Bunch of old women were not gonna go on email when I started <laughs> 12 years ago. Now almost everybody does email. Wow. Which like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Silly the things that are like, okay. Now getting them onto Google. That's the next one. Mm -hmm. Side note. So anyway, but yeah. That seems good. I have a list. Good. Yeah. And I have an idea for next Tuesday. So this is good. All right. Well, so what do you feel you learned today in this conversation? Um, I learned that I have taken good steps, some good steps, but there are a few key ones that I was missing. Mm -hmm. I've also learned that perhaps for me, one of the more foundational, foundational is the wrong word. Uh, one of the things I need to make as a foundation is my relationship with Terry. Mm. And what can I do to, to be there for her? That that really is, is uh, you know, in a way that makes sense to her. Mm -hmm. You know, if what she likes is having coffee and a donut or whatever and chatting, I need to meet her there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I really want to acknowledge that you shifted from, you know, it felt earlier like the worried was kind of a, a bit bigger. And you said, it's a, it's a small W. It's not a big W worry. Where, mm -hmm. where are you now with that? Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel, yeah. yeah. I feel more like I can 
take a step that would be helpful in that. Okay. All right. You're seeing a path. Wonderful. What are you most excited about moving forward with around this? Um, I like, I like being a part of the organization, being part of a team. For me, I, I really, I miss that when I don't have a team. And so I'm excited about being a team with Terry, being a team with these other folks. And how, how do you feel this is going to be? Oh, I'm sorry. You wanted to finish a thought. No, I don't. I, whatever it was, it's gone now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I apologize for stepping on you there a little bit. No worries. Yeah. I was curious because you have such passion and enthusiasm and thinking about being a part of a team and contributing mm -hmm. in this way. What do you think it's going to do for you, like in the big, big scheme of your life in this moment? Um, so I had been feeling unappreciated for a while and I noticed already feeling appreciated and that's, that's lovely because that matters to me. Mm. I, I, whether I like it, that about me or not, it matters to me whether I'm appreciated or not. So I'm seeing that already as, as a positive. And then the whole team business, I just, I do so much better, so much better in a team. Mm -hmm. So those, those are the things that I see. And maybe, maybe a little bit acknowledgement of those women that have past and aren't able to do these things anymore. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you did start out with that an acknowledgement of those yeah. we've lost. And yeah. Oh wait on. So. Beautiful. How are you feeling about that that word inclusivity now? I feel good about it. I think that's good. I yeah. think we could take steps on that. And okay. I can take steps on that. And you can see that. Okay. Beautiful. Well, as we're wrapping up, anything else that you'd like to share? I'm looking at my notes. Okay. My scribbled notes. Can't think of anything. Okay. Well, it was beautiful, beautiful watching you kind of navigate the things that are most important to you, <laughs> the, the possibilities where you see yourself making a contribution and really want to highlight for you that you really do start from a place of possibility and positivity and that is you know you have a you have a light shining on your face as we're I'm sorry speaking. i can move it no 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 i mean it's like a metaphor I'm teasing it's you <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> no you can tease me sorry, all you Jeff. want it's great <laughs> I was just gonna okay. see you never want to coach me again. Oh yeah. no, this is fabulous. I'll coach you anytime, Ellen. Uh, I was just gonna say that I think you bring a bright light. I suspect you, you bring a bright light to everything. Thank you. Thank you, you that. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ellen. Okay. All right. So we will first. Yay, yay. Ellen. Yay, Jen. Well, I could coach you every minute of every day, honestly. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do a debrief. And these are some questions that everyone out there, you can consider this. What did you notice? What skills were used? What did you learn? So who would like to start us off with an observation? Let's see what's in the chat. Maybe we have something in there. Oh, people are popping in. Uh, biz your business acumen, Alan, you got some feedback on that. Okay, so Camille says, I love how Jan is helping Alan see the bigger picture and themes in this particular situation, drawing her out to understand and take ownership of her challenge and come up with her own solutions. Thanks, Camille. Denise, do you mind sharing a little bit more about what you noticed with the active listening? And then Giselle said, as it started, it was way high level, then working through it, got the emotional underlayment of it. Interesting. Giselle, if you can point to a competency that that relates to, that would be lovely. Incredible use of silence. Thanks, um, Christine. I don't know how to connect it to a competency, but okay. it felt like that getting to that emotional um 
was really kind of like what was at the the root of it all. Hmm. It's almost like addressing that would have would have given her strength to feel stronger to conquer the rest of it. Well, that's beautiful language. So I'll acknowledge that. Um, and what skill do you think? What skill do you think I was demonstrating that would allow for that? Any, if you think about the competencies and you can think about it if you want to come back. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Seems like it would be cultivating trust and safety. Cultivating trust and safety, nice. Re oh. mm -hmm. Regarding to the, the active lesson, it was most of the time, it was just the co-t, just Ellen talk. And uh, you give the opportunity to her to articulate her words and her thoughts. And I think this was really important. And when you ask your, the questions, you ask important open questions. So they creating that dialogue and she can really uh, express what she's feeling and the ideas she already have inside of her. Mm -hmm. But I think the act least it's super important and and this is what I want to incorporate in my practice uh more and more because it's make a big bring you a lot of good uh opportunity for the coach to talk and to come up with the ideas so it's really powerful I think the active listen mm -hmm. it's from the active listening that the the open-ended questions come from yeah yeah. Yeah. And there was even one question where I, I started to ask, I got like three or four words into it and her face changed. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. what did you already get from that? I don't need to finish the question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it was really hearing that value that she expressed. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it was, for me, it was fantastic to see like you just listen and ask it the really important questions and come up with all her ideas and in the end she have an action plan to uh, move it forward so I think this was really impactful for me thank mm -hmm. you Jen oh you're so welcome thank you Denise I appreciate hearing what you noticed it really helps good hi Jen yeah. This is Giselle. I think it's um, really creating the awareness, evoking mm -hmm. awareness. Mm -hmm. Connecting it to your comment of as it started, it was way high level, then working through it got the emotional underlayment. Of it. Yeah. For her to be aware of what was the emotional that was there mm -hmm. at the bottom of it all. Right. Right. Yep. And that's the whole point, right? I, I don't know. I can't speak to what her emotions mm. are. I, I'm not responsible for that. And I am responsible for opening the door to the exploration. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Good, good job. You really got to, got to it. Shannon, you said, I love your coaching presence, Jen. You were focused, calm and gave Ellen space in such a lovely and comfortable way. Shannon, how do you think I got to that coaching presence what ideas do you have for yourself even I'm actually curious if you did anything before you came online and kind of got yourself into preparation to be focused on Ellen and and maintaining your presence if there's something you did before then mm, thanks for the question what I, I will share with you one that's going to sound um kind of like I may not be answering your question, then I'll answer you more specifically. So what I want to tell you is really focusing on, on my own personal growth and development, my personal foundation as a coach the, um, has really brought me to a level of a belief system attitudes that really support me in being able to, to show up fully as myself mm. in any situation. And so it's an ongoing thing. And it's part of that act of reflection that um, we do as part of our competencies and also really are part of our ethics as well. Um, another thing that I'll say is that before, before the webinar today, I did actually, even as I was putting on some makeup, I said, okay, Jen, who are you here for today? And of course, there's lots of different possible answers to that. And when I settled on what, what mattered most to me, what made the most sense was to be here for Ellen. 
and to to really just focus in on Ellen and who Ellen is and what Ellen wants and and serve her as as best as I possibly can as a coach. And the minute I did that, suddenly I was just completely relaxed. And it's like, okay, I know I've got this because that's who I care about. That was definitely seen and felt, which I always think is incredible since we're on Zoom and we're in this online Mm -hmm. element and yet you can still feel that energy, that safety, that space um, the, the trust and respect there. It was, it was lovely. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. And I have had some experience coaching in front of um, groups. And so I I knew I could trust that experience as well. And I've also observed a lot of coaches doing it. I actually went back to Ann Fogelin's, um, demo from a couple months ago, which anybody who hasn't watched that yet, it is absolutely extraordinary. Um, so that's a beautiful one to, to reflect on as well. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Oh, there's Anne. Anne, she's in the chat saying great presence, client center throughout. Questions were on supporting the client through the gap, lovely support, trust and safety, acknowledge the client several times, her unique skills and strengths. Jen, listening at a deeper level, getting to the thing beneath the thing, asking for insights, facilitated client growth. So many competencies demonstrated so well. Thank you both. Thank you, Anne. Appreciate my that. pleasure, my friend. Yeah. Beautifully done today. Thank you for the shout out. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah, well, you know how I feel about you. Oh, and Sarah Hansen. Hello, Sarah. So um, I would like to invite Ellen back for a moment and, and share with us now that you've heard some of the things that have been shared about it. Ellen, what would you like to share about your experience as client in this? Oh, I, I was nervous, a, a little nervous about doing it. And you certainly have such an excellent presence. And uh, I, I thought it was great. And, you know, one of the things I like about coaching is, you know, you may have helped me, but it helps a lot of other people that I interact with. And Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you very much. Oh, it is absolutely my pleasure. And you're right, the ripple effect, right? It's absolutely. Was there anything in particular that, that you felt stood out for you from the coaching? (laughs) <laughs> okay um it's hard it's, to be in it and be an observer but I know it's always hard for me to to think about it that way it, I guess it always find I I found it interesting where it went it wasn't necessarily things that I would have predicted we would talk about mm-hmm. the beauty of coaching right mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Because you can think of the things that you can think of on your own, right? And yes. and it'll serve you to a certain extent for sure. And then the beauty of coaching is you've got that other person with no skin in the game, no expectations, just mm-hmm. curiosity, supporting yeah. you in that process of discovering what else is there. And you were really open to it, Ellen. That, yeah. And that's invaluable in a coachee, somebody who is, has that um, curiosity about themselves. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank well, you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Good. Well, thanks. Mm-hmm. And if anything else occurs to you that stands out, feel free to jump back in. All right. Anybody else? Something? No, I guess we can just do Q&A now, right? We can do a general Q&A. Um, so happy just kind of, can we, can we bring everybody on screen for that? Do you think, Lucy, or how would you like to run the Q&A? Yes. Yes, for sure. Okay. okay. And feel free just to mute and turn on your camera as well to talk or put all your questions in the chat as well. So who has a question about maybe the choices that I made as a coach or? I have a one. This is Denise. Oh, hi, Denise. What's the framework you use to uh, uh, do your coach with uh, Ellen? Do you have any, in, uh, really a framework in the background? 
You know, it's so interesting, Denise, that you put it that way, because how I started describing it is that like the competencies are like, if you think of building a house and so the competencies could be the foundation, right? There's that possibility. Um, but I also like to think of, of all of those skills maybe being um, the two by fours that, you know, the framework of the house that you, once it's the drywall is up, you never see it again, but you know, they're there. Right. And so I actually, before the webinar, I said, Jen, you know, the two by fours are all in place. That framework is there. So you, you know, you just, just let it be there for you and supporting you. Um, so I will share that for me, the competencies are this beautiful structure um, roadmap in a sense. Um, I'm very aware of beginning, middle and end, right? For me, that's the easiest way to put it, that there's, there's the beginning of exploration, setting the stage, how important it is to really understand what what's going on for the client, what's most important to them about it, what they what they want to see be different, you're right, and what's their real opportunity. So getting clear on a, a strong uh, agreement for the session. And then it's, for me, it's like, ask the first question and then go from there, right? And so my first question was about her strengths because I, I recognized early, she has an awful lot she can draw from, right? In navigating this new opportunity. And so starting with strengths, that's fun, fundamental to coaching, right? And so from there, it was curiosity, everything else. Okay. Yep. And then that idea of facilitating client growth is that, that, you know, wrapping things up in a beautiful way that really has the client thinking about not just this situation, but the bigger picture of their life and how the situation fits into that. So hopefully that supports you. No. Yeah. yeah. Thank okay. you so much. Thank I you. appreciate I just, that. Yeah. I love your background too. This is Thank you. <laughs> All right. Do we have somebody else with a question? I'm curious about your personal groundwork that you find essential uh, to creating such a lovely coaching presence. I love the spaciousness that you brought to the session and the clarity and just that you sat above the session and you were not invasive or intrusive at all. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, Camille. It's good to know that. Um, so my personal groundwork. Um, included um, things like really getting clear on what my core values are and uh, translating that into what I believe about all people in the world. Um, and uh, really, really doing my best to walk the talk. And um, so when I first got started as a coach, the thing I worked on first with a coach was compassion. I had come from a really competitive industry. Um, it was a high tech, high tech software, Oracle Corporation, if anybody's familiar with that. Um, <laughs> and so I've forgotten how to be compassionate for people because competition was everything. So it started there. And, um, and most recently, it's an ongoing for a long time, but um, love. One of my favorite definitions is coaching is love. And so I challenge myself to be loving in all interactions in life, um, more and more, allow myself more and more. And um, that's serving me really, really well. It's, it's a, it's a, just a gorgeous exploration and challenge and um, big fun. Thank you. I'm in the tech industry too, 30 uh -huh. years in, in biotech tools. So recently, <laughs> recently retired to become a coach and serve the next generation, especially of women, mothers. Uh, how do we do it all? You don't. <laughs> how do we do <laughs> <laughs> well, break, you know, break the bubble of we don't do it all. We have mm. to show up most powerfully for ourselves and, and for the things we care the most about. Mm -hmm. Whoa, you sound really clear, Camille. Glad you're joining us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Somebody else? Questions? Okay. Well, I definitely want to thank you for being here. And Lucy, I think you have some more things that you want to share with everyone. Yes. Yes, sure. Yes. Here's just a QR code. If anyone is interested in learning more about our courses or book a call with our enrollment coach, uh, here you can scan the code if you want to. And also we have a short video um, that I'm going to share. 
here about our coming uh, courses. This is our fast track to ICF credential or the business builder program for coaches and the certified diversity coach program. And here are special thanks for Coach Jen. And a special thanks as well for our Kuchi oh, Ellen Hunt. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yay! Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for all, all of you for attending. Thanks so much, Jen. That was beautiful. Oh, thanks, Sarah. It's so awesome. good to see you too. Please reach out. I will. You yeah. Bet. All right. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that opportunity to be part of this session. Thank I'm so you. I'm glad you were, Denise. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.